Today's video is neutrino death, why neutrinos can't exist. And I'm doing this because a commenter asked me to explain it in more detail, and I thought, well, I'll just do a whole video on it. As you may be aware, there's weak interactions, which are primarily beta decay, radioactive decay, where beta is electrons or positrons. And the first one is neutron decay where a neutron decays to a proton plus an electron plus an anti-neutrino and the energy balances out. And then we step back to neutron production where you need a proton plus an electron plus 782 keV in energy to make up the rest of the mass. And that forms a neutron and it also gives off a neutrino in neutrino theory. So what this gives us is an energy cycle where you have energy from somewhere, that's 782 kV, and then that becomes part of the neutron. And then some of that becomes part of the antineutrino. And then the antineutrino vanishes into space and the energy is lost because the neutrinos are rarely absorbed and the energy recovered and returned to the system. So right there, we can see that neutrino theory violates the principle of conservation of energy because the ener it's a one-way trip and the energy gets permanently lost, whatever energy that was originally. And we can look at the beta decay curve and see that it starts low, has a peak, and then drops down, the tails off right about 782 kV. The peak is around 280 or so, 270, 280, which unsurprisingly means that the leftover energy is about 512 kV almost, where which is the mass of the electron, if you're not familiar with that. So you give off an electron, you have mass of electron energy left over, so that means you have pair production energy of an electron-positron pair, and you form an electron. Wow, it's so simple. Now the average neutrino energy is less because the long tail is longer and so the average neutrino has maybe between 350 and 400 keV. And then we can consider just for scale the mass of the proton ratio to the mass of the electron is 1836. So if it was 512, if you had 1836 neutron decays in a cycle, you produce a neutron that decays, then the entire mass of the proton would be lost. Now, protons don't actually lose mass and they don't decay. So this is just to give you a scale, the most energetic thing we know outside the quantum field is e equals mc squared. It's mass being converted to energy. It's the atomic bombs. So if you lose all the energy in the proton, you've lost a lot of energy. And if we say average it say every 3,000 times because it's the neutrons have slightly less energy, not quite 512, and say if every once a year in free space a neutron gets produced and decay just because of events and because space is filled with filaments as we know now there are voltages and the, these voltages can allow neutrons to form and then decay But if that happened, and we had 3,000 decays in 3,000 years, the entire mass energy of the visible universe would vanish in 3,000 years. 
which would lead to a cold neutrino death. And if we consider stars, stars are more compact and neutrinos and neutrons can form much more rapidly. So in stars we could have the say once an hour. So in 3000 hours a star would lose all of its energy, it would freeze. Hypothetically somehow the gravitational energy would be converted into neutrinos and there would be no energy left. Of course that's not a real thing. We don't have a way to convert gravitational energy into neutrinos except that's what the stupid theory says. And if you had a neutron star it would collapse on itself quite quickly because it would lose all its gravitational energy or explode. Whichever. It's got to be one or the other. So, neutrino theory doesn't make sense when you talk about that. And even in an atomic nucleus, protons and neutrons are always changing position. A proton turns into a neutron and a neutron into a proton because they're exchanging particles, or actually, quantum fluctuations are causing the conversion. So, according to the neutrino theory, Atoms would vanish after a few hours. They, they couldn't exist for 3,000 hours, however often they're interacting. So neutrinos just flat out can't exist. They violate the principle of conservation of energy, and there's no mechanism to supply that energy to them. The energy has to come from somewhere else. And once again, in physics and in logic, you have to have a cause to match an effect. So there has to be an event that triggers the neutron decay. There has to be something that triggers it. And that something has to provide the energy. It has to provide the 1.02 MeV, 2 times 512 keV, to produce the electron and to put the peak of the beta decay curve at around 270. You, it has to come from somewhere and it comes from quantum fluctuations. And it also has to cause this energy distribution. That has to have a cause too. Which means that you have to start with something that has a continuum of energy and that has to be a probability function that gives you this curve. Well, guess what? The only thing around a free neutron with a continuum of energies that can trigger this event are the quantum fluctuations of the quantum field. So that's what it is. It's quantum fluctuations that trigger it. And yeah, at the end, there may, you may have to account for some linear momentum or angular momentum or maybe even a little bit of energy, but the quantum field can do that. You don't need a particle to do that. It's only quantum field deniers that run into problems because there can be waves of, through the quantum field that dissipate angular momentum without losing energy the way a neutrino would. So this is a pretty easy problem to solve. Energy can be dissipated. And you don't need the neutrino there to account for spin either, because spin doesn't arise in a formula. I've got other videos on spin I'll link below. So that's it. Neutrinos are unnecessary to the theory of weak interactions and in specifically beta decay. And it's a violation of the principle of conservation. So neutrinos can't exist. And so anyway, if you like this video, please like it. Share it with your physicist friends particularly those that are, have been calm in the bleeding into neutrinos. 
and then subscribe for future videos. And I will say it's a con because most physicists are aware of the cold neutrino, neutrino death problem, at least if they've studied neutrinos in any amount. So they know this is a problem, but they ignore it. And also, if you'd like to learn more, I have some books for sale on particle theory and quantum field theory, and I explain this some more in parts of those books. But you can learn a lot more about my research that way, which helps me out in my retirement, and you can learn a lot. And so, once again, thanks for watching.